Welcome to Behind the Tools. Here's Tradeify CEO and your host, Michael Steckler. Um, welcome to the Tradeify podcast. I'm delighted to welcome to the show this week, Charlie from Herrix Electricals down in Dunedin in New Zealand. Charlie, um, good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having me. Um, it's our pleasure. And uh, for those of you, so we have quite a few listeners internationally, sort of in the UK, US, and all over the world. So Dunedin is the second largest city, and Charlie will correct me if I get any of this wrong, but second largest city on the South Island of New Zealand. Um, famous for a few things. So I, I always, my wife is actually born in Dunedin, um, so I know it reasonably well. And uh, she always described it as the Scotland of, of New Zealand. And actually Dunedin is the Gaelic name for Edinburgh, for those of you in the, in the UK. Um, similar weather, from what I can see, uh, actually to Scotland, <laughs> in terms of uh, sunshine hours and, and everything else. And it does have the tallest, I think the steepest street in the world in the Guinness Book of Records. And there was some contention with a street in Wales, but um, I think this year that's been settled. And uh, yeah, Dunedin is the winner. It's one in 29, for those of you that care about gradients, that's the, that's the number. So that's pretty, it's pretty steep. So cool place. Um, Charlie has focused predominantly on commercial heating and ventilation. He's been a Sparky for 20 years and set his own business up three and a half years ago. So I'm really excited about having a conversation around, you know, your journey, how you set the business up, how you've approached hiring people and all the sorts of things that we see our trades customers wrestling with um, across the world. So uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for having me. Um... Very good research on Dunedin, by the way. That's uh, oh, you're like <laughs> the wonders of the that? internet. Well, it's the yeah, yeah. combination of a wife that hasn't lived there for many years, but still remembers, and uh, yeah, a little bit of internet research and so on. It's on my list of places to get down to fairly soon when the weather's a bit better. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, um, that's that's good. I'll just co correct you a wee bit. We're electricians, and we also we also yeah. do. Yeah. Heating and ventilation. And well. heating and ventilation. Right, great. No, thanks for that. Cool. Um, so you want to maybe just give us a brief sort of overview of your sort of team and, and, and company uh, and yep. maybe build so, on kind of what, why, you got, why you got into the business and got started. Okay. Well, um, so about three and a half years ago, I decided to start my own business with just, just myself um, based around the fact that I wanted to just make my own decisions and and have jobs running the way that I would like to see them run. Um, and from there, we, yeah, we uh, we soon realised we needed staff. Um, yeah. Started with just me and a, an apprentice, and and now we've got um, another four tradesmen. And my wife Tara, she does the the admin in the office. Great, cool. And how did you, you know, what was the the prompt to start your own business? Did you have customers already that you knew you could have a, a reliance on, or um, not? Not really. I knew I had a, a reasonably good name around different um, circles in Dunedin, and um, the prompt really was. I always had it in the back of my mind, but just never really uh, took the next step. Um, a good friend of mine who's actually ended up being a bit of a mentor to me we were going hunting one day and i was sort of saying about yeah i wish this could be different or that could be different and he said look you know why don't you just out of the blue he just said why don't you start your own business from an outsider looking in he said you've got the you've got the brains and the knowledge he said why don't you just do it and that was it really just oh, needed someone to tell me yeah, yeah. I think mean, that's often the case. And was there, did you, how did you approach sort of generating new business um, at that moment when you launched? Um, I was quite lucky in the fact that uh, once I started business, I got a contract installing heat pumps for a local heat pump uh, heating right. salesman. And then from there, I also got the contract to install DVS systems for the Needon area. Um, so that was because I started business in July, so we we're into winter. So that yeah. was straight away constant work for me. And then from there, I just built up my name and my brand and word of mouth really is what's got me to today. Fantastic. And you mentioned that you hired an apprentice. I mean, that's something we, we're seeing lots of companies and there's quite a few government schemes kind of all over the world to encourage that. What prompted hiring the apprentice and how did you, how did you find them at that moment in time? Um, so 
over my you know my years as an electrician i've enjoyed always training young people or having young people around passing on some knowledge and there's a scheme at high schools called the gateway program yeah. and what they do is you get a high school student who's looking at that particular trade to spend a day with you a week and um, so a local school here target boys high asked if i'd be interested and i said yep so every friday i got a a young guy called Cody to turn up for me and it ended up getting to a point where he was in his last year of school and I would actually book work based around that Friday because he right. was turning out to be such a useful um, helper and then in the end I just said to him look mate do you want to just leave school now I'm, I'm ready to employ you if you can and he was. Yeah and we might have some uh, people that if you've ever interacted with uh, Tradeify Cody did get a lot of uh, commentary around his haircut I think <laughs> a post around you guys so uh, which I think he's probably ahead of his time I'm seeing that haircut has become extremely popular in the last year or so yeah yeah no he um as basically as soon as he left school he just didn't shave or have a haircut for well he's only just recently he's actually just recently done it and he he turned up to work on a Monday and thought shit who's this <laughs> you didn't recognize him um, yeah cool Great. And, you know, what was the, I think one of the things I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, people I've spoken to wrestle with is going from that, you know, start their own company, have their first employee, and then actually have be brave enough, brave enough, not necessarily the right phrase, but make the decision to hire another employee. Uh, and there's a couple of the sort of themes I generally hear. One is it's stressful, more people to manage, more to deal with. There's, and secondarily, there's the fear of, you know, if we don't get enough business, then there's this extra extra overhead. How did you how did you come to that decision when you went to sort of apprentice to then um, full time sort of other tradespeople? Um, so the way it happened was we ended up getting busier and busier, and it was myself, my apprentice, and then I had a contractor helping me with extra work. So he wasn't yeah. employed by me, um, and it was at that top moment when I needed the contractor for fifty hours a week that I thought, well, that's easily going to be taken up by another tradesperson. So we, um, yeah, we advertised for a tradesperson and, and we're lucky we, the first one we got was um, fantastic, yeah. Yeah. And how did you make that? I think one of the other things I've heard quite, quite regularly, actually, especially with apprentices, is there's this fear that you don't always get someone that's great and there's obviously time to get them trained up on the tools and, and do the work. How did, you, how did you approach kind of doing the work whilst having an apprentice to get up to speed and help you on that stuff? Um, so obviously with an apprentice, for the first almost year of, you know, they start with just watching really, holding yeah. things and watching what you're doing. So um, yeah, he was mainly involved in helping me lift heat pumps or carry cable. And then right. from there, you just progress through to learning new skills. And, and now he's at a point where there's a lot of jobs he can do himself yeah yeah fantastic um and then in terms of the sort of bringing a new trades person i mean they're pretty they were presumably very well qualified and just started straight into the, the work you were doing and that was easy to, you felt comfortable outsourcing um i say outsourcing is the wrong wrong phrase it's something that works for you but sort of allowing them to go and do jobs on their own and um how did you build up that trust initially um well the one thing we my wife and i did was we didn't jump straight into every applicant because even though right. we were desperate I've been involved in places before where you can be so desperate for an extra hand you take the first cab off the rank and they right. actually end up costing you you know stress more stress more stress um, you, you start losing that name that you're trying to get for yourself yeah um, so, so we took a lot of time to actually to choose one and um, yeah, we obviously just have a very set, a clear set of um, like a mantra that that we stick to. Right. And did you have any? Do you, how do you test their sort of skill set? How did you approach that? That's one thing that I've heard many trades um, struggle with. Yeah, that, that's probably quite, that's quite a good question because you, you, it's easy to assume that he knows right. how to do everything, but. Um, I knew from his uh, CVs and his references the type of work he'd done, and it, and it was pretty clear for a start. We, you know, for a start, we tried to work alongside each other quite a bit until it got to a point where I just knew 
he, I felt comfortable. He was great with customers, great yeah. with, you know, wholesalers, the apprentice, everything like that. Yeah, fantastic, great. And then, you know, one of the things that I think a lot of our, a lot of people listening to the podcast would find really useful is you've, you've clearly been really successful, um, you know, from building the business three and a half years ago to number of employees you have today. Um, what do you think you did differently or what, do you, what is it that you think you've done really well to allow the business to grow in that way? Um, I think every sort of step we've taken, we've been really methodical, just making sure it's how we want it to work. Um, we, we've tried to, as best we can, not shirk away from how, you know, our morals, our goals, what we want the business yeah. to be. Um, in fact, as, as simple as it is, one of the, one of my biggest things was the communication with customers. So when I started, I, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew when their job was getting done, what stage of right. pro, progress they were in, and just being upfront with people because it's you know you can easily slip into a, a bad habit of yeah not calling people back and being yeah, hard to really contact. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And how did you, how did you do that initially? Um, um, initially, I just answered the phone. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I did. And, and I got a lot of um, comments about that, you know, oh, if you carry on um, being able to be contacted like this, you'll do well and, and things like that. So, yeah, that, that was it. And then, you know, like with the, the software and that we use, it's people are, it can easily, they can easily, it's so easy to communicate with the customer. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely made a big difference I think, for most trades companies over the years. And then, you know, who do you turn to? I guess when you thought about setting, you talked about the, the walk you had with your friend when you were off hunting and you, the decision you came to. Who do you turn to for advice when you were setting up the business and thinking about someone else who maybe been there, done that? How did you approach that? Um, so I've got a, a good friend in Dunedin who has his own electrical business. Um, he's had it a lot longer than what I have and, and he's doing he's doing really well and and I've been able to watch him for a period of time now build a successful business and we're one of that we're we're people we're like that you know even though we're in opposition to each other we we're quite he's quite right. happy to help right. me with advice and so so that's been really good and then I'm I'm also joined a, a BNI group it's a business networking group um so it's sort of one person from each type of business you know lawyers builders and okay. in that group it's been fantastic you're just not necessarily just for the amount of work you get through the group but the you know some some people have been in business for 40 years in that group so that's yeah. been really yeah. really helpful have you leveraged any of that group services we think about the, so you mentioned there's lawyers and has that been useful in that respect as well or did you yeah. have all that sort yeah. of stuff covered yeah and you know insurance lawyers um I bought all my vehicles from the all the vans through the Toyota dealer. She's in the group, so stuff oh, like that is yeah, has yeah, been, it makes um, it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, accountant. So, yeah, it's really easy to build a good relationship with people like that. Yeah, that's really cool. And what's the and the hardest thing? Like when you look back over the last few years, um, you're in great shape now. Was there anything that was sort of really difficult that you struggled with? Uh, I think. I think the the most difficult thing, and it's still difficult today, is is um, converting phone calls to actual information. Um, because when I started, I was predominantly 100% on the tools, um, and then I did office work at night. I found it hard to to take a phone call, fixing fixing a light or something, and then rem remembering to get that Remember what phone call yeah. Yeah. into the system somehow. Um, but no, we, yeah, we've worked away at that and we've got systems in place to do that now. So, yeah. Yeah. So great. Okay. Um, is there anything you do differently? I mean, it sort of touches on the same, it builds on that same question, but when you look back, uh, in how you started the business, is there anything you would change about how you set the business up? Um, for anyone, I guess the question is really for anyone that's probably listened to this and thinking, right, I'm a, I'm a sole trader. I'm thinking about hiring my first employee. Um, I guess any advice around how you would approach that differently if there is anything that you would do differently? I think if 
I think I would try and identify if I was going to be predominantly office based or or on the on the job based, and then I would I would get that admin person to help me sooner right. because yeah. it yeah. felt like eighteen months or a good eighteen months. I was sort of struggling trying to do both, whereas it was so much more efficient having someone help me in the office. And so you didn't didn't have the office support straight out the door. You were doing both, doing the tools, and then sort of dealing with the admin when you got back in the evening. That's right. Yeah, I yeah, sort of yeah. I'd be sending invoices out at one thirty, two o'clock in the morning, and it was just wasn't it wasn't really going to be able to sustain that. I wish I'd yeah. made that choice sooner. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. That's really good advice for people. I think knowing when that is, and and also, did you have a, a hand on how many hours that would be? Like when you think about having that admin sort of how big a job that was going to be for that person? Um, yeah, I didn't really know at the time. Um, but now that I've got someone doing the admin, I'm blown away at how sort of much time is involved in it. Um, because a lot of our service type work is um, smaller jobs and you're relying on talking to tenants and, and homeowners and booking times and the, the the amount of time or the amount of love that you have to give to that person is amazing. For, for a half an hour job fixing a light, that person needs to know you've received the job, that you're scheduling the job, that you've scheduled it and when the person's going to come and then they want, you know, they, they want the invoice promptly. So that whole, that whole circle is quite a involved right matrix i guess yeah yeah and then my last couple of questions one was around you know obviously in new zealand i think it's been fairly well publicized that you know we have been very lucky in this country around the impacts of covid um, and there obviously still has been an impact but not to the same degree as other other parts of the world um have you seen any impact around anything to do with either demand going up because people are investing more in sort of home improvements versus travel have you seen any impact at all on your business um, other than the obvious ones of, uh, you know, clean, like everyone keeping clean and keeping healthy. Um, I think you're right. I think more people are spending money on their own homes. Um, we've noticed a massive influx in renovations, extensions, stuff like that. Um, yeah. but if, if, if I went back to before COVID, you know, I wouldn't, there's not much has changed in that, in that sense. A lot of products we struck, you know, struggle to get on time. So it's made us be more um, organized and ordering equipment right. for certain jobs. But, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. theme I've heard from other people is surprise has become more of an issue. Is that, is that the case for you as well? Yeah, that's right. I mean, so previously, if we were about to finish a new house for someone, we could order the material a week before we went to finish it. But now, you actually have to be proactive and organised enough to order all the equipment about a month pre-job, you know. And how do you manage, there's one one area that I think a lot of people seem to struggle with is also managing cash flow. And what you've just described there sounds like that possibly exacerbates that problem some more. Are you just charging for that supplies up front or as part pay on the invoice? How are you, how are you managing that side of things? Yeah, so the way the way I, um, I do it is um, as I get to the end of the month, I'll go through all the jobs in the system and any job that has equipment on it, time on it, anything like that, I'll just mark to invoice. I'll invoice right. a progress for that, um, for what's owed on that job and then go from there. So that, yeah, uh, you're not, yeah, you, you're constantly getting a cash flow um, and you can change that to be weekly, monthly, however you want. Yeah, cool, great. Brilliant. I know, I really, this has been really, really helpful. Um, Charlie, I have a few. We're sort of finishing the podcast every week with a few quick fire questions. Um, I don't know if we share these with you in advance, but I don't think it, it, it matters too much either way. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire these off at you uh, and then just let me know what you think. First one is if you could pick another trade, I'm always interested in this answer from people. Um, uh, which one would it be? So if you weren't an electrician, what would you be? Probably an engineer. Yeah. Yep. And why would you pick? Why would you pick an engineer? Um, I just like the way that you know they they solve problems and 
and and build things welding yeah. and that sort of thing it's it interests me yeah yeah cool great um favorite on-site lunch favorite on-site lunch uh Probably a steak and cheese pie and a can of Coke, to be honest. <laughs> it would be. I, I, assume, I was going to guess it was going to be a, a pie and a can of Coke. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, I had a spoke to a UK uh, person a couple of weeks ago, and theirs was like a Tesco. I think it was a Tesco sandwich and a packet of crisps, right. if memory serves me right. So I was expecting it to be a pie. Pies are very yeah. popular in New Zealand. So, yeah, yeah, pie and a Coke. Cool. And then yeah. um, if you picked one sort of go-to tool brand, what would it be? Who would it be? Makita. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, and then there's obviously been a lot less of this, and we're hoping there'll be a bit more of this coming soon in the rest of the world. But if you had a favourite kind of live sporting or music event, what would it be, or who would it be? It would probably be if I could do it anywhere. It would be All Blacks England at Twickenham. Yeah. yeah. Presumably you'd want the All Blacks winning that one, wouldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a different point of view, you might have guessed. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> next one was best prank to play on your apprentice. So best prank, if any. Um, yeah, I do have one. Um, it was a few years ago. We were fixing a um, we we're fi fixing a pump next to an effluent pond on a cow shed. So it's where all the effluent from the yeah. cows go. And he was kneeling down fixing something, and I dropped it. <laughs> A great big boulder in next to him and he got covered. <laughs> nice. Pretty did, he did he work for the rest of the day like that? Did he get changed? Uh, he, got, he got to go home and have a share. Oh, he did get to go home. <laughs> great. Uh, <laughs> very last question is, you know, if there's anyone else you think we should talk to next, are there other people in the industry that you look at that you think would be interesting for us to have a conversation with? Um, I think any of the trades. I mean, I get asked quite often um, by builders that I work for and plumbers who um, who see my invoicing and stuff like that that they are interested to see what what system I use because it, it seems so streamlined at the other end you know when they are getting updates on jobs updates on progress invoices things like that it's um so I think anyone in the trail I think builders or or plumbers could could definitely use this the system right. yeah cool Brilliant. Well, look, I really appreciate you joining. It's been really insightful and thanks for sharing your experience and congrats as well on the, the journey so far. Sounds like it's been, uh, been positive and successful, which is great. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Behind the Tools is brought to you by Tradeify, job management software for your trade business. If you enjoyed the podcast, let us know by leaving a review and be sure to tell your mates about it. Email behindthetools at tradeifyhq.com if you or someone you know would be keen to join the show as a guest.